So I'll use Maryland as an example. So uh, we can touch, emotionally communicate so we can get our bonding needs met. That can create a safe relationship so we can start creating a safe attachment. But a tension's gonna come up because at some time she's gonna wanna take her hand out of mine. So if you could do that. Mm -hmm. So there's an expression of autonomy. Now, if I have some uh, issues like I'm afraid I'm gonna be left and I haven't worked those through, as she takes her hand away, I might say, whoa, come back here. And then this tension and almost a seesaw can come back and forth. And this is part of the function of the misunderstanding of relationships, that this is meant to actually play out in relationships, that there is a tension between holding a connection, the attachment, and having two autonomous individuals in a relationship, and how do you hold both at the same time? And how do you attach? And how do you let go and still feel both of you feel good? And then how do you reconnect after yes. you've let go? And so that balance, that going back and forth, is uh, what relationships are sort of, you might say, designed to help us confront, to help us grow as adults, but it involves a certain amount of tension. And Hollywood doesn't like to look at this. They like to look at, you know, you hold the hand and you've held your hands for the rest of your life and then you die together. Right. Rather than life is this ongoing balance. And usually when people come in for therapy, they're either too close and enmeshed or they are so far apart from each other, they cannot reconnect. They don't know how to do that. They don't know how. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the work becomes about how do we help, how do they reestablish and hold on to it in an appropriate way, and how do they break it appropriately and then come back to a connection again? Well, let's, let's talk about the approach for psychothera psychotherapy that you would have for um, a couple that had the issue of avoidance of closeness, for example. Right. So, um, one of the ways we would start would be to work uh, experientially in groups and workshops uh, with the graduated closeness exercise. So they have a fear of getting close. So you don't cure the fear of getting close by staying distant. Right. You, we help them in a safe way start getting close. You guide them in the process. Right. Deal with the emotions that come up deal with the belief systems that are there. Like, if I let myself get close to Marilyn, then she'll own me. I'll lose my autonomy. And then work with holding that tension again, that's that same tension between closeness and autonomy. And we work with people who've been married a long time and haven't had a sexual relationship for, say, 10 years and seem to be happy, but there's obviously a lot of unhappiness. There's also people who come in who've never been able to get married and they just thought it would happen, but it never did for them because they sabotage every relationship that starts. There are people who come in who've been divorced two and three times, and they don't know what they're doing that sets this pattern up that makes it inevitable that another relationship is going to have the same result as the last right. one or two or three. So if someone comes in to see either one of us, um, it's not uh, you would sit and talk for 50 minutes and we would take copious notes and say <laughs> nothing. It's a pretty directive, um, you know, d see, interpersonal way of dealing. Like, you know, what's going on in your life? Why is this a problem? What do you want to change? What is the problem? And let's, right. Right. let's really get uh, into what's going on. And what we can do to work with it successfully. And then we would take a similar approach with the other sort of areas, whether it's a fear of being left. Right. Then we start exploring what are the emotions behind that, what are the thoughts behind that. There's a lot of uh, behavioral corrections uh, therapy for emotions such as anger, pain, fear, love and joy. Um, what kind of a therapy do you do for things like that? Um, we so in the uh, vernacular of how one does therapy, we do an experiential. So it's not just sitting talk, it's to create experiences that you feel in your body emotionally. Uh, we focus directly on the emotions. So a lot of the popular literature, say on anger or fear, is uh, all the ways to try and suppress it and uh, almost like make it go away. 
And what we'll do sometimes is we'll actually intensify it so you can find out what's in there. And it's sort of um, taking the, the cover off the top of a pot, looking in, finding out what's there so you can actually use it better. So rather than trying to suppress it, we find a way to use it and express it in a healthy way and then try and take a look at what's causing it in the first place. What basic needs not being met in your life? Because if that needs not being met, according to the theory, you're going to feel bad. So that then you may have a set of behaviors that get in the way of getting it met and we start working at changing those behaviors. A whole set of beliefs that get in the way. So we change those. What type of issues do people bring to you and what surprises you in your work? Most people come in because they're unhappy. And there are multi many, many reasons. But if they all come down to the same thing. They're unhappy. And what surprises me about doing this work is how creative people can be at preventing change in their lives and how persistent uh, certain negative behaviors can be. And that's part of the creativity. How do I find a way to help this person to turn what they currently do into something that's productive for them and that makes them, brings happiness into their lives. So in terms of successful treatments, give us some examples of uh, some treatments that... Well, the man we were talking them. about who came in so angry, who'd had a failed marriage, had been uh, separated from a career that he really loved. He has a new career. He's extremely happy. He's extremely productive. He's married very successfully and very happily and not angry. <laughs> really? So <laughs> really. he's just not an it's, angry person It's quite anymore. an amazing thing. And this is f his acknowledgment of who he is and what he wants in his life. It's not suppression at all. So the quality of his life and his it's relationships entirely different. is completely different. It's, it's totally, actually possible? It's amazingly different. It's absolutely wow. and completely possible. Uh, another man came in on the brink of being fired. No relationships in his life whatsoever. Um, He's on about four antidepressants. Uh, he's now very, very happily married, very, very successful in his career, and uh, only takes medication occasionally. And he's a pleasure to be around, <laughs> which is yeah. a right. huge, huge and, difference. And neither of these gentlemen were <laughs> fun to be with, and now they're very loving, very wonderful people. So you kind of help reprogram the core. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Thank you for joining us at Your Source TV. Please visit us at www.yoursourcetv.net.